If you were going to point out what frustrated you the most, Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, Jake Moody, the defense, or the refs. Wow. What what grabs your attention the most in terms of frustration? Again, I don't think anybody wants to blame any one person or sure, thing. Sure, sure. It's not that kind of loss. It, like, there's plenty of stuff to go around. There's Brock, no goat. Right. Brock Brock had his worst game. And, and Kyle made some weird calls. And Brandon dropped a ball. And Moody missed a kick. And the defense let someone named PJ drive the field on him. And the refs had some misses. But what... What's still on your mind as far as what went down? Well, if we do it via process of elimination, which I think is the only way to to really go about it, for me, the defense is not on the table at all. The defense had two interceptions, and the defense played bend but don't break for the majority of the game. The touchdown they gave up to Kareem Hunt was a very well-designed play, and it was the tight end comes in, and you know everyone thought that it would be the brotherly shove or whatever we're calling it, where, you know, the tight end gets the the snap under center and everybody charges forward. And Cleveland and Stefanski, they outsmarted Shanahan and and company and Steve Wilkes. That was great. Tip the cap. The defense is off the table for me. Brock Purdy, yeah, he, he had a bad game. He had a bad game. He missed open receivers. He had a couple of drops. He threw his first interception of the year. For me, Brock Purdy is possibly the guy in terms of, you know, who I'm most frustrated with. Jake Moody, you get what you get when you have a rookie kicker, and he the, the first kick he missed was 50-plus or 55-plus. That's going to happen. It was tough conditions. Yeah, absolutely. Outdoor, a little bit of wind. The game winner you absolutely have to make at this level. That's a 90% kick, and he choked it. He pushed it. So he's up on the list, too, but for me, it's Kyle Shanahan because your team – was not prepared, and you can say that the pregame fight was was a non-thing, but when you go into Cleveland undefeated and you engage in that sort of a like pushing match, and I'm saying pushing in place of another word <laughs> that I don't want to use, you're the undefeated team here, guys. Yeah. You don't need to get involved in any back-and-forth Debo and IU throwing hands and Trent Williams has to come in and clean up after the fact. That only that did was motivate Cleveland even more. They were already motivated, but you let Cleveland know that you were concerned about them. So for me, it's Kyle Shanahan. Questionable play calling, and his team did not show up buttoned up. Ill prepared, you say. Ill prepared so, emotionally. Why? Okay, you, you come out in pregame. You're getting into a fight with the Cleveland know. Browns. What this are you guys is, doing? This is always odd to me. I, I and and you know, not saying you're wrong. I, I don't know how that affected the game. I also have no idea what was said. I have no idea what caused it. I think it's interesting though that we would look at something like this. This is football. These are the biggest, baddest, most hyped up dudes on the face of the planet. Did you watch the Bills and Giants last night? Yeah. Did you see that scrum at the end? Yeah. In the middle of the game? Like, at the end. Yeah, but to, at to, the end. To, to request that these guys essentially put their testosterone away, I mean, is that realistic? Pre-game fights are Harry High School. Oh. When you're 5-0 and okay. and you go into Cleveland and you're going to let them get your goat... I mean, what was said to where you're going to have to get into it? I have no idea. I mean, what? I have no idea, but it's interesting to me because, you know, for instance, we did the Doc Peterson thing last year, and it's like, you can't let a man talk to you and do that to you. He put his hands on him. Well, but, and the the football players didn't. Their hands were all over each other. Right. It's football. That's what I mean. They got your go. I mean. They they goaded you into it. Come on. I'm with Guru on this. How does that affect the game? Well, it affected Debo. He had no catches, and he got hurt. Oh, so, and the pregame scrum was to blame for that, for the injury? The pregame scrum was enough to where they won the game. They won the pregame scrum, and they won the game. How does the pregame scrum affect the game? How does it affect the game? I don't know. Yeah. I I mean, all I know is that they goaded you into a pregame scrum, and then they won the football game. Yeah, yeah. That's all I do Those are two two things. 
uh, not right. be, not not to be connected in any way, shape, or form. Well, you don't have to connect them. I mean, they. Well, you guys are bringing it up. You're so the it must five matter. and team. It matters to why? Where, How, why? Because does it Cleveland was motivated, and maybe that got them well, extra motivated. Maybe. I mean, I NFL. Like, I, I are, do people show up to these games week six not motivated? The best team in the planet is on your field, and everyone's telling you you're a 10-point dog, and you weren't motivated until Debo chirped? Oh, you were motivated. I mean, but I don't Maybe know. that got you extra motivated. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, of all the things that happened yesterday that, that do have our attention, I'm having a hard time finding that one in my bucket. Um, because, as I said, this one, this one goes out to everybody. Right. It goes out to everybody. So who has you most frustrated of well, the list you put out there? In the end, believe it or not, and, and I want to say this and make sure that it doesn't sound like I'm blaming this person for the loss because there's no way that this loss is on, on one person. But in the final analysis, what frustrates me the most? Jake Moody. And I hate that for a 23-year-old rookie. But yes, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And you still sat there all lined up in the center of the field with what for a pro kicker should be something that at least three out of four you you make. Um, it is an incredibly makeable kick. You've been crushing it this year. So we know everything is all squared away with his game, with his alignment, with his flow. Whatever. There are elements. I'm not saying that it's easy. Nothing that we watch these people do is easy. Nothing. None of it is easy. But yeah, that frustrates me the most because I guess, can I put it this way? The least is being asked of him. Kyle Shanahan's got to outsmart Jim Schwartz. Brock Purdy's got Miles Garrett in his face, and we want him to throw accurate passes. The ball is wet, and we want Brandon Ayuk to catch it with his fingertips. We want the offensive line to be able to win the battle in the trenches on the road against one of the top defenses in football. These things are all incredibly hard. Even the refs. We want the ref to see that the shoulder pad hit the shoulder pad, not the face mask at full speed when you're behind the actual play. We're asking for people to do really hard things. And I would imagine that kicking a 41-yard field goal with that amount of, uh, of pressure and in the elements is also hard. But if you ask me, of all the things that's being asked of on that field, that's the easiest one. Sure. you got to make that kick because it would have made all this other stuff go away. Most of it, I mean, it still would be a bad game for Brock Purdy, but they'd be 6-0. and It still would be, man, they had trouble running the ball and McCaffrey might be hurt for a while, but you'd be 6-0. and And it would be... Debo Samuel had a big bagel after a pregame fight, but you're 6-0. and And instead, you're 5-0. and You're tied with Philly. You're a half game ahead of Detroit. The NFC feels more wide open. You have another road game coming up, and now there are more questions. Granted, Minnesota's defense will never be a facsimile for what Cleveland brought. And, you know, Cleveland off a bye. Cleveland a very physical front, and they took it to the Niners, and they took it to them after that opening drive. The Niners didn't do very much of anything in that football game. And you got to give credit to Cleveland because, and you know, Jim Schwartz, we talked about it last week. What was he, 8-1 and one against Kyle Shanahan, and now nine he's 9-1? And, 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 and by the way, that stat also carried with it the fact that Kyle only once had scored more than 20 points, and that remains. Yeah. He still has a hard time getting to uh, 20 points. 20 would have gotten it done. 20 would have gotten it done. And you got your under, right, uh, at 36? Uh, yep. Because you I bet did. it at 36 and a half? Yes, but I also had the Niners minus six, which oh, I geez, thought was yeah. a gift. After right. After the spread was up to 10 by the time this thing kicked off because I bet it before Deshaun Watson got announced out. But, yeah, yeah, they lose the thing outright. So, Browns in the under, but. I'd have given up both of those bets for Jake Moody's field goal to yeah, go in. Yeah, exactly. That would have made it a whole lot better. It sure would have. And that kick, and I was just looking at the uh, the replay again, there was no wind at that point in the ball game. The flags on the uprights are absolutely limp. I did see metrics that actually did a dive on the field goal itself. The ball comes off of his foot just right of center. Yep. Okay, just right of center. Spin, and I think they said .4 four yards off center. <laughs> this is the analytics, right? So great. That's where it comes off his foot. 
it pushes it another point eight yards of spin. Okay. So those two things, though, still keep it inside the upright. Wind, 2.3 yards to the right. And the ball definitely was not more than 2.3 yeah. yards to the right of, of the uh, of the upright. So I love uh, analytics. So I'm, the wind, the wind apparently sure. did yeah. actually push that ball. It pushed the it pushed the wind from the Niners to the to the to the Browns. I'm just looking at the flags that they hang at the top of the uprights, yeah, yeah. and they are both dead limp. There's not even a flutter either way. To me, that was just a classic push, and I've seen it from uh, many of my tee shots. I call it Blocktoberfest. <laughs> it's not a slice. But it's just a block. You don't get over to your front side, and you miss it right. It doesn't slice in the woods. It spun a little bit. But it's right, it, and it drifts right. The ball comes off his foot inside the uprights. Barely. But inside. Yeah. Barely is good enough. If it goes straight, and again, the Niners win. I wonder if we're going to hear about not what his pronoun is, but what's his preferred hash mark. Because I wonder if he prefers the left hash mark. I still think Kyle Shanahan left meat on the bone. With 32 seconds left, I what get a damn it. play on third I, down! I get it, but I just I I'm super mindful of of what happens if they do run that play and something goes wrong. You know what I mean? Mario Cristobal last week literally had people calling for his job. Right. It's a totally different scenario. Yeah. But the point is, is running a running back up the middle. Don't act like something bad can't happen. If they fumble the ball there. Man, and all in the effort to get three more yards. What are we all in here saying today? What the hell are you doing trying to turn a 41-yarder into a 38-yarder by, by taking that chance? So I, I get it. The bottom line for me, I, I totally understand people who wanted that to get a little closer, but come on. Uh, big league kicker, you can, sure. make, you can make a 41-yard field goal. You would hope. And, uh, you know, you, you ran off Robbie Gold so that you could draft this guy. And this guy so far in the biggest moment he's had is not the guy. Oh, oh for one. Yeah. Oh for one. And you can, you know, hey, you had 57 yarder earlier in the year. Great. He had no high leverage kicks until this one and he missed it.